Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Johns Hopkins School of Education Mind, Brain, and Teaching virtual webinar. My name is Sian John. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission at the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Also presenting today, we have Dr. Maria Hardman and Dr. Ranjini John Gould. Before we get started, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. First, today's webinar is being recorded. We will be able to share a link with you after the event is complete. Also, please take a second to see if your mic is on mute right now. Please have your mic on mute at all times during the presentation. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Please type your question in the chat box and Dr. Hardman, Dr. Jumble, and I will read and answer your questions. Next, I would like to share the agenda for today's presentation. We will kick off the presentation sharing an overview of the Johns Hopkins School of Education. Then Dr. Hardman and Dr. John Bull will introduce themselves and discuss an overview and go over the details of the Mind, Brain, and Teaching program. Lastly, I'll wrap it up with admissions requirements and leave the floor open for questions at the end. To start, we are one of nine schools at Johns Hopkins University. We began offering college courses for teachers in 1909 and then became our own school in 2007. We offer more than 25 graduate programs, which includes doctoral, master's, and graduate certificate programs. We are proud to share that the Johns Hopkins School of Education is consistently ranked one of the top schools in education by the US News and World Report. For student enrollment, we have approximately 2,465 students, 121 full-time faculty, 1,045 degrees were awarded, and a strong network of 22,000 alumni at the Johns Hopkins School of Education. At this time, I am going to hand the floor over to Dr. John Bull and Dr. Hardman. They will introduce themselves and present on the Mind, Brain, and Teaching program. Welcome and good afternoon. My name is Ranjani John Bull, and like it says here, I'm an assistant professor in the Mind, Brain, and Teaching program. I teach both in this graduate certificate, and I also teach in the Doctor of Education program. I started at Hopkins in 2012, uh, doing a postdoctoral fellowship with Dr. Mariel Hardiman um, on our study on arts integration and memory, looking to see whether or not students remembered information, science information and content knowledge better if they learned it through arts integration, which if you join our certificate, you'll get a chance to learn about how that's related to learning in the brain through Dr. Hardiman's um, brain targeted teaching framework and um, the research that that framework organizes and helps practitioners apply into the classroom. Um, so after, after my fellowship in 2014, I joined the faculty and I've had the privilege to get to work with Dr. Hardiman in this program. And um, it's just been a pleasure. It's a pleasure to work with um, all of our students who take our information and knowledge and uh, the knowledge from the Mind, Brain, and Teaching program and they apply it in wonderfully creative ways in their professional contexts. Um, so that's it, one of the, yeah, one of the joys of getting to work in this program with you all and with our, my colleagues. Um, my research focuses on teacher efficacy and cultural competence the social contexts of these belief changes um, and how neuroeducation professional development can enhance teacher efficacy and cultural competence and um, how arts integration methods improve memory, efficacy, all of those things that I'm looking at. Um, so yeah, so that's a little bit about me. I'll hand the mic over to Dr. Hardiman. Hello and welcome everyone. I'm so happy to see so many of you here. And um, you know, I have to say that um, this, this certificate, um, since we um, began uh, teaching it online in 2010 has had an international uh, group of scholars coming to us. So I see that we have people with us today 
from um, California to New York and in between Texas, Ohio, Indiana. And we have people here from Croatia who signed up, South Korea, India, Canada, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia. Um, so we have been so fortunate that our students represent the diversity of not only our country, but the world. So it's really my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar. Um, I am Ariel Hardiman, I'm a professor, and I am the um, co-founder and I direct the Neuroeducation Initiative, um, which includes um, the certificate program and some of our other outreach partnerships and academic programming and our research. Uh, so I've, I've been here since 2006. I will tell you that the certificate started in 2008 as a face-to-face -face certificate, but we had so many students from across the world asking us if they could join the certificate and would we please have it online. So we were one of the first certificate programs to move to an online format and um, we have doubled our enrollment since that time. I will also tell you to um, keep an eye open for an article is, that is coming out soon about a group of students who were in our 2010, our very first 2010 online um, mind, brain, and teaching program. And what's interesting about their story is that this group of students, 10 years later, they met online, four different states they're from, four different ways in, of wanting to be in the program and goals for the program, and they are still connected. Um, professionally and personally after 10 years. So I think that speaks to the nature, we hope, of, of how we try to foster collaboration in this program. Um, like Dr. John Bull, um, my research focus is on arts integration and how the arts contribute to retention of academic content. And our work has been uh, specifically around science content. Um, Dr. John Bull's background in um, teacher efficacy and social competency has been a really strong and lovely match for our program. Um, she's really expanded our, our role. Um, additionally, I'm on, um, I do some work in, in the area of create, creative thinking and problem solving and I'm currently on a National Science Foundation grant to look at how arts integration also improves creative thinking within the science world. So you would have opportunities as a student, as, as Dr. John Bull said, to uh, learn more about our own research and hopefully contribute to that in, in ways that would be um, useful and valuable to you. So um, let's look at the next slide and why should you pursue the certificate? And, you know, I think about our former students and our current students. And many students, I'll start with the top bubble. Um, they see themselves as being an advanced practitioner. Um, they may not be interested in moving into a different role, or they might within their school, um, within the district, within their nonprofit organization, and even for-profit and government organizations. Um, are represented within our students group. And I think that, that everyone has found that this knowledge brings them into a different sphere of thinking about um, teaching and training and even coaching. Uh, many go on to leadership roles in the field. Um, some come into the certificate and they are already in a leadership role. Um, others pursue leadership roles because of their knowledge um, that is um, differentiated, I, I have to say. Many students, um, and including some who will be writing um, in this article, say, why, why did I not learn this information about how the brain thinks and learns in my undergraduate or graduate training um, as an educator or as a trainer? Uh, next, we have um, many who are in or seek to be in policy roles. 
And there are a lot of policy implications um, around the idea of neuroeducation and how it supports um, a myriad of positive outcomes. Um, and that does affect educational policy um, at the local and regional and national level. Some of our students are or become educational consultants. Um, they often work with us in planning a professional development and other kinds of activities that help people within the educational sphere and also outside of it um, to become better learners. And then many of our students don't plan to change what they do at all. They're, they're in their profession already, but learning is their lifelong goal. And um, I have to say some come in and they're just finishing their, their bachelor's program and others have um, maybe advanced degrees, PhDs, um, law degrees, um, multiple master's degrees, but they are really interested in just expanding their learning. So there's so many reasons that uh, we have students coming into this program and um, we're just, we love the diversity that um, everyone brings in their viewpoint and um, how they perceive the world. So um, I think this, this next slide really just talks about it. Uh, people from pre-K to higher education are in our programs. Um, we're finding more and more leaders of organizations whether it's nonprofit or government organizations or for-profit organizations are finding that the need to train a workforce is really important. And they wanna use the latest tools from neuroscience and cognitive science uh, in order to inform what they do. More and more parents are homeschooling their children as we know right now. And many parents just flock to our programs because they want to know more about their own children. And then face-to-face um, -face and online education is um, really changing today. And we think that our content informs both. So next slide is we'll describe the certificate. It is 15 uh, graduate credits. It explores how research from the learning sciences can inform the field of education. And when we say education, we talk broadly about education, not only in traditional ways, but in many other non-traditional ways as well. Um, our courses uh, do integrate disciplines and in investigating human learning and development. And in the next bullet, you'll see you know, what some of those disciplines are. We draw from research of cognitive science and psychology, brain science, um, we want you to know about the brain and how it works, but you're not required to have um, background in any kind of um, neuroscience. Uh, but we, we do want you to leave with some at least essential knowledge about how the brain works, its structure and function, so that when you read research, you can read it through the lens of your own knowledge. And then I think one of the, the hallmarks of our program is that not only are you reading research, but you're thinking through what does this mean and how does research inform educational practices and policies? And you'll find that that's true in all of our courses. So we are fully online, as I said before. The time frame typically is um, five semesters. So you would take a course each semester and that ends up to be two academic years and, and one summer. And again, they are offered in sequential order and it's a cohort structure. So you'll be in a cohort. I will say that there are students who do come in and take um, a course um, as an elective. So there may be some others joining, but essentially you, you would be in a cohort of students through your five courses. And then more and more people are opting to take two courses at once. And in that way, you can finish the course in three semesters. You do two fall, two spring, and then one summer. And for those of you who do apply and you come into our program, we'd be asking you which option that you'd like so that we know how to group you. And so um, 
The first course that you'll take is grounded in um, the instructional framework of brain targeted teaching that Dr. Jambal mentioned earlier. Um, that is in the very first course. So right away, you'll start seeing how research is applied and how it's applied within educational and um, broader settings, organizational context. As you go through the certificate, you'll go deeper into the research, but we have found from our very first cohort on that many of the students go back to this model as they read research because they find what they're reading fits somewhere within the instructional framework of brain targeted teaching. So we see it as a, a way to ground your thinking um, as you move um, forward and beyond that first course. Okay, and so um, you see a picture of me there, um, very different from the picture you saw before, because before I came to Hopkins, I spent many years in Baltimore City Schools and I was a principal or an assistant principal for 25 of those years. And there I am on the playground as the principal of my last assignment, Roland Park Elementary Middle School, which was a school of about 1400 kids. And it was in that time frame that my teachers really understood that um, there was more to what we knew um, about how to teach and learn than what we were learning in our, in our traditional programs. And so that led to my first book, um, Connecting Brain Research with Effective Teaching, and then later the second book, which is the textbook for this, this course, um, The Brain Targeted Teaching Model for 21st Century Schools. And I have to say between those times and the 10 years between those books, or eight years maybe, um, the research that supports the model um, exploded. There was so much research and um, we continue to bring you the most current research that supports um, the instructional framework of that model and beyond. So at this point, I will turn this over now to Dr. Jumble to tell you more about our program. All right. Thank you, Dr. Hardiman. Um, the curriculum structure for this certificate is built out into five courses. And we, like Dr. Hardiman said, we, we bring you in as a cohort that is informed by previous groups who said that they, they wanted more connection. And so the, the cohort model has worked out well uh, in terms of providing you a community to travel these courses uh, and, and this educational journey through. Um, so we start off in the fall with the mind explorations in mind, brain, and teaching. This is where you learn about the brain targeted teaching framework and a lot of the introductory um, ground level information about from the learning sciences. It's, um, it's a survey course and learning the framework really gives you a filter and um, a way to think about all of the content that you learn throughout the rest of your courses. So, um, and how it is applicable to professional practice. So that's the fall course. In the spring, you would learn about normal development through the Fundamentals of Cognitive Development course. And then following that, in the summer, you would learn about um, neurobiology of learning differences and the neurodiversity that is present in all people and how um, there are different presentations for our, um, our neurobiology, essentially. In the fall, you um, get to apply some of this knowledge through the literacy and numeracy course in cognitive processes of literacy and numeracy because this came out as one of the major areas that teachers, educators, and education professionals wanted to understand better was some of the cognitive processes behind these major areas. And then the final course is the special topics in brain science course that is a capstone course um, to finish off your certificate. In this course, there is a survey of a variety of different special topics that we want you to be aware of that are still within the umbrella of the learning sciences. We can't cover everything that we would love to cover within these five courses, um, but we give you a smattering of additional topics to think about and consider um, so that you're a little bit more knowledgeable about the uh, applicable research for the learning sciences. Um, and in this course, you also work on 
your application project, your capstone application project, you would develop a literature review and also a capstone application. So this is the sequence. If you take the, the fall, spring, summer, fall, spring sequence, we also have that option for an accelerated um, version where you would take two courses in the fall, um, two courses in the spring, and then complete your certificate in the summer. All right. Next slide. Yeah, and in our online curriculum de delivery, we use a variety of different um, uh, tools. We use the Blackboard platform as our main home for the online learning. We also have asynchronous lectures um, and we have asynchronous ex learning experiences. We also have video lectures and we have interactives, discussions, um, some group projects, individual projects, and we also host some synchronous sessions. Um, in general, we don't re uh, require attendance at the synchronous sessions because we do have an international group. That said, the majority of our students do attend the synchronous sessions because they, they like the live interaction a couple of times per course. All right, next slide. So the outcomes of an MBT graduate certificate um, are, could be in these two different categories, right? So you come out of here being research translators in your professional practice. Usually our students tell us that as soon as they begin this certificate, they find knowledge that is readily applicable within their professional practice. And so you start to become these neuroeducators in your professional, professional settings. So you're, you're gaining skills for digesting the research literature and rooting yourselves in the literature and you're starting to translate that information to your professional practice. Oftentimes we find that our students are taking that information and sharing it with their colleagues immediately and making alter, alterations to their professional practice. Um, and we design our projects and our assignments within our courses so that you can take that information and think about how to apply it to your practice. The whole point about this, this graduate certificate is that we want to help you have a more effective, um, emotionally warm and um, joyful experience in education. And that's um, grounding your professional practice in the learning sciences can do that. Um, and it can help you to make sense of the whys um, behind the hows. So, um, and oftentimes when in the neuroeducator category, people, coming from this program tend to end up being point people for knowledge uh, for, the, for the learning sciences in their professional practices and end up being leaders and professional development folks. And um, yeah, so it's, it's a really wonderful conglomeration of outcomes from this degree program. All right, next slide. These are just a few things that some of our students have said after they've left the MBT program. I'll just give you a couple of minutes to a couple of seconds to read through this. I'll read through that third one because I think that summarizes what a lot of our students say. The My Brain Teaching Program has been exactly what I was looking for as a catalyst to move forward in the next phase of my academic and professional journeys. And yes, I do feel better prepared in the brain sciences and more research literate. I think that's what a lot of people say, that this kind of catalyzes their next steps. People find that love of learning, they're hungry for the information, and, um, and, and it pushes them forward in their next level of professional development. All right, next slide. One of the wonderful things about Johns Hopkins School of Education is that you can get a master's in educational, a master's of science in education with an educational studies concentration, and you can combine two certificates to get that master's degree. That is not something that many other universities 
offer. Uh, most other universities offer just a master's in special ed or a master's in gifted education or master's in STEM. Here at Hopkins, you can get a master's of science and education with the educational studies concentration and have in mind, brain, and teaching as one of your certificates and any of these other seven certificates as the other um, the other certificate. So you can be you can have some specialized knowledge in mind, brain, and teaching and some specialized knowledge in gifted education, which I think is a, a huge advantage to um, to our our institution. That's of course I'm a little bit biased there, but I coming from a traditional um, background, I know that this is not out there in many other places. Um, so I would highly encourage you, if you're considering the Mind, Brain, and Teaching Certificate Program, that you look into these other certificates and consider whether or not um, going for the full master's is, um, is something that is appetizing for you and applicable to your professional context. All right, next slide. And this is back to you, Ms. Sion. All right, thank you, Dr. Hardman and Dr. John Bull. So now we're going to move on by uh, going over the application requirements. Applicants must submit a completed application, which can be found on our website. Uh, please keep in mind there is an $80 application fee when you submit your application. In addition, the supporting materials that are required for this program are also an updated resume that highlights any academic, professional, research, and leadership experiences. Next, a personal statement, and it should not exceed more than 750 words, so please visit our website for additional information on your, app, on your personal statement. Moving on, you should submit two letters of recommendation. In addition, uh, scholarly writing. So this is a sample, writing sample that was, it could be written from a prior coursework. Um, if you do not have an appropriate sample of scholarly writing to submit, um, as an alternative, you may instead write a brief essay. Please visit our website for information on the alternative writing sample. And lastly, we need all official transcripts from all uh, institutions that you may have taken courses but did not receive a degree. So again, this is from all post-secondary institutions that you have attended. There are additional steps you need to take in order to complete the application if you're an international student. You must submit a TOEFL or IELTS score. If your degree was completed outside of the US, you will need to complete a course by course evaluation. Additional information can be found on our website. The base tuition for the next academic school year is $882 per credit. So the estimated tuition for overall uh, is $13,230 for 15 credit hours. Please note, additional fees apply and are charged separately from tuition. We encourage you to view our tuition and fees page on our website for the most up-to-date information about tuition and fees. If you're interested in applying for financial aid, we strongly encourage you to apply for financial aid when you start your application. Please visit our website if you have any questions relating to financial aid. You'll find contact information for the Office of Financial Aid and details of loans and scholarships that are available. And here are some point of contacts. If you have any questions relating to admissions, please reach out to Tyree Maddox. And then any questions regards to the program, um, Camila Mika Sims, and of course, Dr. Maria Hardman and Dr. Ranjini John Bull. Thank you for attending the Mind Brain Teaching Program presentation. At this time, Dr. John Bull, Dr. Hardman, and I would like to open up the floor for questions. So we received a question from Mindy. We actually received a couple questions from Mindy. Uh, the very first one is, how much interaction online is with the cohort?
uh, how much interaction online is with the cohort? Yes, that was a question from me. Okay. Well, I'll start and then turn it over to Dr. Jomble. Um, the way our learning management system is set up, um, there are weekly um, discussions and sometimes they last a week, sometimes they last longer than a week, but um, students are very involved in a discussion forum with classmates. So there's a lot of engagement with classmates. Uh, Dr. Jumble, do you want to um, answer that further? Yeah, you, yeah, in addition to the discussions, you'll also have um, some group work that you'll, you'll be assigned to do. So you'll have um, some interactions via the group work. And um, we have quite a few people who um, end up connecting on WhatsApp um, just to um, socialize offline as well. But yeah, every week you'll have some interactions with the cohort. And the next question from Mindy is, how much is read and respond? What do, what do the courses typically require of homework? Um, so I'll start and again, toss it to Dr. Jumble. Um, within the learning management system we have, and we use Blackboard, as you know, um, you know, there are readings, there are short videos. Um, you'll be looking at research. Um, I, I have to say that, you know, there, I'm looking at another question about the workload and maybe these two questions go together. Um, and that is that this certificate was written for working professionals. Um, we, we know that everyone, um, typically most people who come into our certificate, unless they're doing the double option, and sometimes those are full-time students, but most people are in the workforce and um, the, the course is designed for working professionals. So we, um, we have, over the last 10 years, I would say that probably out of all programs at Hopkins, we have the lowest uh, rate of withdrawal from our program. Um, so I think our, our students find the program to be rigorous, but also manageable and our instructors um, to be really very student um, oriented. So Dr. Jumble, you wanna say more? Yeah, I think I think that's about right. It's a it's a manageable workload. We don't ask you to do anything unreasonable. It's not a doctoral level um, course, um, but we provide yeah we provide uh, a rigorous amount of reading. I, I would say that it's like when it comes to our course evaluations, um, our students feel like the workload is manageable with their full time jobs. So um, yeah, I, there there's a there are discussions in almost every session. So that's like a, you know, just to be specific, that's like a 250 word kind of post um, response to the readings and, um, and then, you know, interacting with your colleagues in those discussion forums. And then there are in the first course, you know, some written assignments and a project at the end of the course, you know, um, and then it's, it's similar like that for the, for the remaining courses as well. Um, in the final, and we encourage you throughout um, the certificate to be looking at literature that is interesting to you that you might want to explore for your final project in the capstone course um, so that you can be building up your literature review toward that final course. I think it's, um, we've never had any complaints about um, the workload and, and people have found it enriching and manageable. Mm -hmm. And the last question I have from Mindy is, what are the research possibilities during this certificate? Um, you know, most students do some sort of research um, project. Um, if you're talking about uh, research with us, uh, you know, that varies according to what research grants we have. And, um, Maybe Dr. Jumble can talk about that. Also, there are several questions that um, I'd like to address. So maybe while I have the floor, I'll do it now. There's several questions about the doctoral program 
Um, so maybe this, this is also a good time to talk about that. Our, our graduate certificate was written first, and then the courses, all five of them, were brought into the EDD program. We have a Doctor of Education program, and the courses were, um, the, the content remains the same, um, but the, the courses were contextualized to the Doctor of Education, moving students through to the dissertation phase. So we do not um, allow students to enter the mind, brain, and teaching doctoral program if they've already had the certificate because the course titles and the course content is essentially the same. But if you want to join our EDD program, don't let that discourage you. Many of our students have finished the certificate and then they go into our EDD program and their problem of practice is one that is compatible with the mind, brain, and teaching program, even though they might be in the entrepreneurial leadership or the technology, they may be in a different doctoral specialization, but they can use the content that they learned in the certificate in their problem of practice in their dissertation. So I'm gonna turn that over to Dr. John Bull to say a few more words about that. Sure, I think one of the, so somebody asked what opportunities for research do you have within the graduate certificate program? Um, our capstone application project is designed like a mini research project, but you don't, it's a, it's an, it's a course assignment. So you do not need to go through the institutional review board. Um, so you would do a literature review and then you would also um, design an intervention of sorts. Um, that is, it's almost like a mini thesis. Um, in terms of doing research on a research team, that is more of the PhD level um, kind of work. And, you know, I would encourage you to apply to one of the PhD programs, uh, the PhD program, if you're interested in doing that kind of work. Um, if you already have your master's degree and you want to go for the EDD, the, you do your own dissertation research in the EDD program. Um, yeah, so the, I mean, that's what I can speak to in terms of, uh, in terms of the opportunity to do research. You do a, a lot of literature reviews and literature searches that, um, that help you write research papers. Um, without gathering your own data per se, but um, yeah, I hope I hope that's I hope that's answered your question. I, I'd like to um, combine a few questions into one answer, if you don't mind, Sian, because I can see them here, and I think that they relate. No GRE is required. Um, the application process, um, again, if you apply, um, our Enrollment Management Services walks you through all the steps of the application process. You do not have to apply at the outset if you decide in the middle of the certificate that you want to do the full master's, but you have to decide before you go into the second certificate. So you can decide in the, first, in the middle of the first certificate, you can decide that you're going to apply for either a second certificate or to be in the education master's. Um, if you're already a, a student, then you would apply for this certificate um, just as anyone else would. And, um, you know, you would, in the um, application, you let, um, you reveal that you are already a student. Um, so I think I answered some of the questions about application. No GRE, um, you can decide mid mid um, certificate. And what in terms of deadline, um, what we really suggest is that if you want to be in the certificate that you apply um, soon because this is a very um, popular certificate in the School of Education. So um, the earlier you apply, um, the better chance you have of obtaining a spot in our program. And 
I see one here is the program recommended for people who are already educators. No, many people who are changing fields come into our program and some are not educators at all. They may be trainers in industry. Um, so you, you don't have to worry if you're not an educator. A lot of our, our students are not. Um, and then in terms of who decides to do it in one year, um, we are very open with that, and um, I think more and more students are looking to do it within one year. So you tell us if you want to do it in with, within one year, and um, I don't know, Dr. Jumbo, if you want to say anything more about that, but I don't, I don't think it's, um, you know, I don't think that we have criteria that would exclude people. No, there's not a criteria that would exclude you. The reason that we decided to offer that option was uh, related to financial aid, because if you're taking two courses, six credits, then you're eligible for fi financial aid. And, um, and I think it's federal loans. Um, if you're only taking one course, you're not eligible for financial aid. Um, so that's, that's the main criteria. And we want to be able to help you to, to attain the education that you want to, want to do. And if that, if that helps you, then that's why we wanted to offer it. And we wanted to be responsive to our students in that way. And then we have some questions that are um, being sent privately as well um, from Nicole. Is it possible to do three courses at once or is it two plus two plus one the fastest structure you can do? I think it would be hard to do three at once, but if you think you could take it on, I don't know, Dr. Jumbo. We, we actually, I'm, I don't know that we could. That We'd we could have to explore that i think yeah. we've, that's not happened we've never had that happen in the past um the folks this is the first year that we have offered the two to one option um and the folks that we're taking to in the fall and two in the spring found it i mean it's a lot of work along with a full-time job um but if you as in we could explore it we, we we just haven't done it yet but we could explore it and you know what, what will happen is once you come into the program, then um, Dr. John Bull and I and, um, and Camilla Mika Sims will reach out to you, ask you, you know, which structure you'd like to be in, and you have an individual program plan. And for those, if anybody wants to do it that way, you know, I, Dr. John Bull and I would, would work with you to see how we could make that happen. Um, and individualize your program plan that way. Yeah, absolutely. So somebody asked, is it better to enroll in, in the certificate program or the doctorate of education? And I, I just wanted to say uh, the doctorate of education program requires that you have a master's degree. So if you don't have a master's degree, then you would want to get that first before applying to that. Um, if you do, then I would say, you know, if, if the doctorate of education is where you want to go and that meets your professional goals, then that makes sense. If you want to have that deep grounding in research because it requires to get the doctorate, it requires the dissertation research um, project, which is a huge undertaking. So if that is not what you think you need to, um, to push you to the next level, then I would say, and, you're, and what you're wanting is the content from, um, from the My Brain and Teaching Certificate to apply to your professional practice, then, it's, then I would say take the certificate. You know, if you were planning to go on to get the doctorate anyway, to become a scholar practitioner, practitioner scholar, and that's what you wanted to do, then, then yes, I would encourage you to go the doctorate of education route. But um, yeah, so it, it really depends on your professional goals. It also depends on whether or not you have a master's degree already as well. I hope that's helpful. And Dr. John Bull and I are available if you, any of you would like to just talk to us um, either, you know, on the phone or by Zoom so we could address your individual um, questions. Um, you know, I, I, one thing I really do want to stress is that the, um, the master's program has quite a few people, I think I said it earlier, but has quite a few people who do come in with doctorates already. 
and they're coming into the master's certificate because of the content. Um, they don't need to have another doctorate. Um, I don't know, Dr. Jumble, if that's so as true for the EDD program. I think students are coming to get a doctorate in the EDD program, although some may already have one. Yeah, that's true. Um, the majority of people are coming to get their doctorate for the first time. We have had some students that that's their second doctoral degree. And um, we have had a couple of students who started the doctoral program in the mind brain teaching specialization and then changed their mind and decided they wanted to do the certificate instead. Um, the, the specialization courses don't start until the summer of, of, at the end of the first year of the doctoral program. So you would have taken four courses in the doctoral program before you got to the first mind brain teaching specialization course. Um, so it is possible, um, but then I think there would be a conversation about if you would want just the certificate or to do the master's um, program. And again, one of the great things about the School of Education here at Johns Hopkins is that we try our best to meet the needs of our students. And if individuals have particular paths that they want to take, we try our best to meet that need. Um, so um, yes, that has happened, but you know, there are some nuances about that situation. Um, yeah. Other questions? Or Sian, do you see things that we're not, we haven't addressed yet? Uh, let's see, we have one in regards to, um, and I think you guys uh, mentioned briefly in the beginning, how many hours per week do we need to invest in one course? Dr. Jumble, I'll let you take that one. Oh, sure. Um, it depends on how much time you want to spend. I think it's anywhere between um, four hours to 10 hours. Like I think um, once people start to get into the literature, um, they get really excited about it and want to spend more time. But, um, and we also in our courses, we offer a lot of optional readings that are not required. Uh, so there's lots of additional material for you to dive into if you're if you're hungry for it. Um, yeah, I, that's about what I'd say. Thank you, Dr. Jumble. Um, we do have a couple questions in regards to can this certificate credit be counted toward the doctoral and education program? So if if you have if you're taking the master's there are there's a certain number of master's credits that are transferred toward your doctoral program um, so yes um, in general masters there are master's credits that are transferred over to the doctoral program and i don't have that number right off the top of my head how many of those are transferred over um, but like we said or like dr hardeman said earlier um, if you have a mind brain teaching uh, certificate um, that would not replace mind brain teaching specialization courses. You would need to choose a different specialization course uh, or specialization track um, for your doctorate of education. Yeah, so the answer is yes and no. I mean, it does, it, this, these courses count toward the master's uh, 36 credits, I believe it is now. Yes, it's 36. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to have 36 credits and Really, sometimes some of our students um, apply to or want to apply to the EDD program, but their master's program was only 32 credits or maybe 33 or maybe 30. Um, by getting an extra five credits, um, that really helps you then um, because then you can use them to 36 credit requirement for the EDD program. Um, but those courses would not, as Dr. Jumble said, replace any doctoral courses. And I see one more question here about is the certificate recognized internationally since it's an online program. I would probably say that um, I'm not sure by rec what recognized means, but um, you know, we Hopkins is an international institution. And so our courses, um, no matter what school you graduate from at Hopkins, are known and recognized internationally. We're an accredited school and an accredited university with middle states. Um, 
it, our program does not provide um, certification. So a certificate and certification are two different things. Um, certification might be that you're certified as a um, special ed teacher or you're certified as a elementary teacher. We don't, in, we don't provide state certification for this program, um, but it is, it is recognized internationally because the university is. I hope that answers your question. And the answer is yes to, can you email any of us or both of us directly? Absolutely. All right, so at this time, it looks like um, we do not have any more questions. Um, and of course, if you have any questions later on after the virtual webinar, uh, Dr. Hardman and Dr. John Bull are always available um, and obviously very eager to answer your questions. And if you have questions in regards to admissions as well, feel free to contact us. And again, we are more than happy to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, a con conversation with you in regards to your profession or academic goals. Thank you so much for your time and also thank you Dr. Hardman and Dr. John Bull. Um, it was such a great presentation um, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you so much everyone. Thank you all for joining us. We look forward to seeing your applications.